Hello, today I'm going to be talking about fantasy and sci-fi books I read before I started my channel. And I got this idea from Books with Brittany, who did a wonderful video on popular sci-fi and fantasy she read before she started her channel. And this is going to be a little bit different because I'm probably going to talk about some books that aren't super well known or popular. And this will not be in perfect chronological order. It was hard to organize this list and I'm sure I'll forget some books along the way that I'll regret after filming this video, but I still think it'll be fun to do and maybe interesting for you just to know where I come from as a reader. So starting off in high school, the first fantasy book I ever read was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. And my friend lent me this. I was just blown away by it at the time. I was already pretty immersed in fantasy culture at the time. I watched a lot of fantasy movies like The Princess Bride and The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and things like that. So I was already pretty established with fantasy. I had friends who were gamers who played D&D and live action role playing, that kind of thing. But when I read The Hobbit, I just felt like everything opened up for me. Just there was something about Tolkien's writing and something about that story and the description of hobbits that just sparked so much joy and excitement inside of me. It felt like the world opened up. It felt like this is what I've been looking for that I didn't know I was looking for. Now, my famous story about that is that I read The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers. I started The Return of the King, and for whatever reason, I could never finish The Return of the King. I didn't finish The Lord of the Rings until last year. I've talked about that a lot of times, so I won't waste much time talking about that now. But overall, I did love Tolkien's writing. I thought he wrote so beautifully, and I just loved the world and what the uh, Lord of the Rings inspired in me. And so I knew that fantasy was my thing. I just felt that in my heart, but I had some struggles along the way. So another book that I read as a fantasy reader in high school, because it was kind of hard for me to find what fantasy books I wanted to read. And I don't even remember the order that I read all these in. I just remember The Hobbit was the first fantasy book. But again, I read um, The Neverending Story by Michael Enda. And I was so shocked because I grew up with the movie of this. I still think the movie is a brilliant adaptation. However, the movie ends halfway through the book and I was just completely floored to discover that when I read the book. And the book is so good. It actually brings up some richness and some layers that I think the movie doesn't have. But again, I still love the movie. It was also eye-opening for me just to know or realize how much better a book can be than a movie in some ways or what a book can do that a movie can't. I guess I should put it that way. They're just different. I'm not saying that one's necessarily better. And a couple of other books I read that were movies at the time, I read The Princess Bride because I had seen that movie, loved it, so I read the book. I don't remember if I liked it more than the movie or not. And then another book I read that was already a movie at the time that I had already seen was The Last Unicorn. I loved The Last Unicorn. I thought it was just a beautiful story. I love that movie too. I would like to reread that someday and rewatch it for nostalgia purposes, but that was a very meaningful story for me at the time too. Now, another book I read as a teenager, which I've mentioned here on the channel before, which I'm sure nobody's ever heard of, is Lisa Mason's Summer of Love. If you've heard of it, it's probably from me because I mentioned it before in a time travel video. But this is a time travel historical fiction book set in the summer of love in San Francisco. I just adored it. And this follows a 14 year old girl. I think I had just turned 14 when I read this book and felt such a connection with the main protagonist, especially how her story is about the importance of her, just her existence meaningful in and of it of itself without her having to go on some big heroic journey. It was just the fact that she's alive and that is significant. Something about that really appealed to me. I don't know, it's almost like the opposite of a hero's journey in a way. It's almost like discovering you are the hero without having to go on the journey in a way. I don't know if I'm remembering even that part accurately. I just remember I loved this book. I loved the way Lisa Mason brought San Francisco to life. Even though it was the hippie era, 
there was definitely some dark tones to that era too. It wasn't all love and light. And so she really brought that out in such a powerful way. And another thing I loved about this book is that each of the sections and the chapters, I believe, yeah, each of the chapters is named after a famous song of the time. So here's Foxy Lady, White Rabbit, Sunshine Superman. This one's dedicated to the one I love. So very popular songs at the time that were integrated into the chapter titles, which I thought was really well done. I really loved this book when I was younger. I did reread it in my 20s. I don't know if it would hold up now. It probably wouldn't, but I still want to reread it someday again for nostalgia purposes. Probably my first sci-fi book that wasn't Frankenstein was this book. And I did read Frankenstein too as a teen. I might as well mention that here. Another book I read towards my late teens was The Elric Saga by Michael Moorcock. Not this bind up, but a 1990s bind up that a friend lent me. And I remember I struggled a little bit initially when I started The Elric Saga. And then I put it down, I picked it back up, and I just loved it. I felt so immersed in this world. I had no idea that Michael Moorcock would be such a big deal at the time. And all I know is that I was sad to return that book to my friend because I enjoyed it so much. And then I tried to find my own edition of the same bind up he lent me and I could never find it again. It was a 1990s one. And all I could find after that were just sort of like these shorter versions, um, shorter bind ups of each of the stories. And now they've come up with this new one and Evie gifted this to me. So excited to reread it someday. I guess around this time, I can go ahead and talk about my Patricia McKillop phase because I did read a whole bunch of Patricia McKillop books at the time through my library. They had a bunch and I would check out one, read it, return it, check out the next. I don't remember anything about those stories though. I just remember they had beautiful covers. I can't even tell you anything else about them. I know I enjoyed them. That's all I remember. And then around that time, I think I went through my Neil Gaiman phase too. So I read some Neil Gaiman, not a lot. I did read Good Omens twice. I read Stardust. Um, I started American Gods. And unfortunately, it's one of the few books I DNF'd. Maybe I'll return to that in a separate video. I read Coraline. I have now read The Ocean at the End of the Lane via audio. And I also read Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, The Dream Hunters. This is a beautiful graphic novel. It's the first graphic novel I've ever read. I still have it. And it has artwork by Yoshitaka Amano. Beautiful, beautiful artwork in this edition. Beautiful story. Following the Neil Gaiman phase was the Harry Potter phase. And that's when I read all of the Harry Potter books, probably because I knew the movie was coming out, but also because I had a friend who was really into Harry Potter and I trusted her opinion quite a bit. She loved them. She said they were very well written and she was an avid reader at the time. I really enjoyed Harry Potter and especially as an undergraduate music major, I just couldn't help but think of music as magic. And when I was reading about certain professors, they reminded me about professors that I had at the School of Music I was going to. So I just couldn't help but see the sort of like equivalent of music being magic. And instead of a wand, we had a baton. And my professor at the time, my mentor, voice teacher, who was a great scholar, loved the Harry Potter series. He thought they were excellent as well. So I had that uh, going for me. I, I saw no reason or shame to get into Harry Potter as an adult. And so I did. And actually I even went to a couple of those late night release parties at Barnes and Noble with my friend and had a good time. I really enjoyed the Harry Potter series. I still enjoy the movies too. I think they're fantastic. After that, I could also talk about how I got back into adult fantasy because it seems like I did take a long break from getting really back into adult fantasy. When I did get into adult fantasy, not saying Harry Potter is adult fantasy, by the way, I know better than that, but I did get into adult fantasy again with this book, with Game of Thrones. This actually isn't my edition. I think this is my husband's. I never owned my own edition of the series, but I got into the series because the show was gonna come out on HBO and I had a couple of friends at a party talk about how much they loved this series. They were longtime fans and they hated Martin because he took so long between books, even back then, even before Dance of Dragons came out. I decided to take a chance, but I thought this would be a little bit difficult for me to get into because I considered those two friends very 
intelligent, smarter than I was at the time. And I thought it would just be a challenge for me. I thought it would take me forever. And it took me about 100 pages, almost 100 pages into the first book to get my bearings. And then around that point is when suddenly I was gripped. And from there, I just binged all five books that were out at the time, uh, including Dance of Dragons, which was just released. I was just blown away how George R. R. Martin was able to introduce so many different characters and weave them together in a story and get me invested in all of them and also integrate character development with plot in such an incredible way with amazing world building. I found myself just really fascinated by all the political intrigue, everything. I absolutely, to this day, love these books way more than the show, even though I think the show, I mean, for the first couple of seasons was okay. They felt for me very much like The Hobbit did when I was in high school, in which I felt like this is what I've been looking for. This is the experience I've been wanting in fantasy. And so this just won my heart over. It got me into reading again. Absolutely love A Song of Ice and Fire. And then after reading A Song of Ice and Fire, I just built up some confidence. I would go through these long, long reading slumps with fiction, and then I'd start getting into it again, and, and it would start building up my confidence to read other books in fiction that I maybe would be intimidated by at the time. And so another one of those books was Dune. And I had been intimidated by this book for so many years. I just thought, I don't know, I just felt so scared of it because again, a lot of my friends had read it and reread it several times. I, and every time they talked about it, I thought there's no way I'm gonna be able to understand what's going on in this book. It is huge, it is sci-fi. It felt so outside my comfort zone and I was blown away how much I loved it. I remember thinking when I finished Dune that this was possibly the best book I had ever read in my entire life. And the only reason I hesitated to say it was definitely the best book I had ever read in my entire life was because I felt like the end felt a little inconclusive for me personally, but I still love the book. I reread it last year, obviously. It still holds value for me personally. I know it doesn't resonate for everyone, but for me, it just, it resonated on so many different levels. It just felt so big, so immersive. I still love the micro and macro aspects of the story and just the story world, I think my own mind created when reading the book. So very powerful read for me indeed. And that got me into classic sci-fi at the time. So I haven't read a lot of sci-fi, but at the time I just really wanted to get into some classic sci-fi. So I read 2001 Space Odyssey, some Heinlein. I read Starship Troopers. I read Stranger in a Strange Land. I remember this book being a little bit challenging for me to get into initially, and then the ending really, really getting to me emotionally. But uh, this was well worth the read anyway. I would like to reread it someday and maybe just pick apart the themes a little bit more deeply. Um, I also read Ender's Game and I loved this. There was a movie that came out at the time, but I did read the book before I watched that and loved the book. I would really like to reread this for, again, for the themes, because I don't think I really read it from that lens when I was younger. I went through a long reading slump after that. I read The Witcher, The Last Wish, the first short story collection, because my husband was playing the video game. He bought the book because he found out about the books. And he was going to read that book. I think he finally did, but I ended up picking it up first because I saw it and I thought, this looks cool, I wanna read it. And so I did. And then from there, the next thing I knew, I read through the entire Witcher series. I still love the characters in the Witcher series. They've still stayed with me all this time later. I think they were so well realized. I really like the very unique fantasy family sort of thing that happens in that story. I really enjoyed the magical creatures, really enjoyed a lot of things. But at the same time, the story itself was hard for me to get into. While I was reading the books, I just felt my, my enjoyment, my personal enjoyment going up and down and up and down. And I'd be really excited and really into it. And then I'd be really, really struggling through it, but I kept going and I read through the entire series and I don't regret it. Even though I had some mixed feelings, especially about Lady of the Lake, I don't know if some of that had to do with expectation. I think I was just expecting something different, especially from that book in particular. And when it started, and it started off really weird right away, I thought, this is cool. I'm really excited to see where this goes. 
But then where it ended, it just left me feeling very unsatisfied. I do think my husband had a little bit more fun playing the game than I did actually reading the books. However, I don't regret it. I love the characters to this day. I still think they were worth reading. I still enjoyed it for that reason alone. And that takes me into the booktube years because I did find out about booktube around 2017 maybe. It was like after finishing the Witcher series, I started to watch a lot of booktube, but mostly what I found at the time was YA booktube. I didn't know about adult booktube until later. And so I was picking up a lot of YA fantasy and it really fulfilled a need for me for all the books I wish had existed when I was younger. So I kind of felt like I was making up for lost time in some ways and I don't regret it at all. But I will not talk about the YA books I read in this video because it would just be way too long. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my Sanderson journey though, because I did start off reading the Mistborn trilogy, Mistborn era one and era two. And as far as era one is concerned, it was okay. I really enjoyed it. However, I don't think it quite hit me on the level I was hoping, not like A Song of Ice and Fire did. So I think I was looking for something that that moved me on that level. And then Era 2, I started out liking it, but over time I just found the characters didn't really click for me personally. So I don't think I'll be continuing with the Lost Metal or whatever next Era 2 book that's coming out. And then with Stormlight Archive, I spent 2020, I know I'm fast forwarding a bit, but I spent 2020 reading a lot of Sanderson that year. I read the four Stormlight Archive books and I read the novellas Dawn Shard, Edge Dancer. I read Skyward, the Star Sight. I read all the Sanderson you could think of. I read one called The Original, which is a sci-fi audiobook. Uh, oh yeah, I also read Warbreaker. I can't forget that one. And honestly, I got burnt out. <laughs> I got burnt out on Sanderson. Um, I do think that the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive was kind of a mixed bag for me. I enjoyed it overall, but there were certain things about Sanderson's writing that kind of started to grate on me a little bit in that particular book. It's not that I'm not going to continue with Stormlight Archive. I do want to continue it whenever he writes his fifth book. But I am on a Sanderson diet right now. I have no desire to read any Sanderson anytime soon. In fact, when I started my channel at the beginning of 2021, I just made it a conscious effort not to talk about Sanderson. And even though I'd read so much Sanderson, I could have probably gotten a lot of views and made a lot of Sanderson content. And I just didn't feel it. I felt so burnt out. So again, Sanderson Diet, glad that I read it, but I think I just pushed through to read too much in too short a time. But I did read some other popular fantasy books before starting a channel. I read Jade City. I just didn't really click with it. I had different expectations in mind. The way that Fonda Lee would kind of introduce some dialogue between characters and then switch over to thoughts in their minds about events that happened prior to the book just for some reason kept pulling me out of the story. I kept wanting the dialogue to flow a little bit more. You know how like a lot of authors will give you some sections of dialogue and then sections of either exposition or description or, you know, memory, whatever it is. I think the way she set it up in that book just kept pulling me out of the story. It was like a structural thing with how she introduced certain content. However, I do think that her character work, even though I didn't really fall in love with the characters and wasn't really that into the jade magic personally, I do think that she did some incredible work with certain scenes. There was a certain family event that brings people together, I'll just say that to make it spoiler free, that I thought she added incredible nuance to. There was just amazing subtlety between the characters that I enjoyed. So I could see why people liked it, but I just felt as though I struggled with some of the things I just mentioned enough that I decided it just wasn't a series I wanted to continue. And other series I read, The Rage of Dragons, which I loved, and I felt like I shouldn't have loved it because it was so action heavy, and we have kind of like a one note character who's very driven by rage, but I loved it, I bought it, I felt it, I loved how I enjoyed that story, even though he's not the brightest character, I felt like it made sense for me. And with The Fires of Vengeance, 
I didn't like that one as much because I felt like Evan Winter addressed everything that fantasy readers wanted him to address, but it didn't work for me. Like I didn't feel as engaged anymore in Tao's quest because he wasn't as interesting a character to me when he wasn't angry. I don't know what that says about me, but there were things I did like about it. And I still am considering continuing that series when Winter comes out with the third book, 112263 by Stephen King. I loved that book. I've talked about this on the channel before, so I won't say much here. My whole family has read that book, or at least my siblings have, and my mom and dad, well, actually my sister hasn't read it, but I love that book so much, and it's my older brother's favorite book of all time. I also read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I quite enjoyed. Of course, I have mentioned before that I read Malazan Book of the Fallen books one through three before starting a channel, which I don't have videos on, and unfortunately. And then what else? I read Dark Tower one and two. Um, quite enjoyed those books, especially number two. I also read Leviathan Wakes, which is the first book in the Expanse series, and I did see the first episode of the Expanse a few years ago um, before reading the book, but I, I really enjoyed the book. I thought it was interesting the way it explored a certain question about how we disseminate important information. But for whatever reason, I just never felt compelled to continue the series, though I did enjoy that first book. I also read Brent Weeks's Black Prism and it was okay. The writing style just didn't work for me and I'm not the most analytical when it comes to writing style. At least at that time, especially I wasn't, but there was something about it that was breaking my immersion. I'll just put it that way. I also read Boundary Side, and while I really enjoyed it and thought it was very, very funny, I didn't feel compelled to continue that series. It wasn't my favorite type of world or magic system or anything like that, so I, I didn't continue that one. And uh, Promise of Blood, I've mentioned before, read that with the Shelf Space Book Club. It just didn't quite work for me personally. Though um, it was an interesting uh, setting and idea to start with. And then The Lies of Locke Lamora. I did enjoy that book quite a bit. I know that's like hit or miss for a lot of people. I loved it. I had a good time with it. The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear. I did read those too. And I really enjoyed, especially The Name of the Wind. The Wise Man's Fear, I enjoyed the beginning part quite a bit. I thought I was going to enjoy that book even more than the first book, and then uh, I ended up kind of tiring of growth by the end of the book. Maybe I'll reread The Name of the Wind someday, because I did like that first book. I thought it was very atmospheric. It was enjoyable. It was very enjoyable for me. And lastly, I did read the Poppy War trilogy, though I did talk about that early on in my channel. And that's it. Those are all the fantasy and sci-fi books I can remember right now, I'm sure I forgot many, that I read prior to starting a channel. And of course, I didn't include a lot of other genres that I've read from. I've read a lot of other genres, a lot of other kinds of books, and there's just no way I'm going through all of that here. But let me know what you thought in the comments section below on this list. I've had a great journey so far. And there are so many books I want to read. I remember there was a time when I just had no idea what to read, which is why there is so much sparseness, I think, in my journey along the way. I just didn't know. I didn't know a lot. And now I have a greater sense of what appeals to me as a reader and uh, the types of books I want to pick up in the future. So I don't feel like I'll ever have that problem ever again. So I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if you've read any of the books I've mentioned, your thoughts on my thoughts, or say hi if you just want to say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.